Now, one thing I didn't experience this time that I went, but the time before I did go to the spa. And so I would love to know the concept with that a little bit, too. Yes. So for those who are unfamiliar, we have an Ayurvedic spa and Ayurveda is an ancient science of well-being. It's the sister science of yoga. And in short, really what it does is any imbalances you may have in the mind, body, soul, and spirit, it rebalances through herbal supplements, oils, detoxing, and lifestyle choices. So this spa really dives into the spa services surrounding Ayurveda. So lots of hot oil massages, detoxing massages, cleansing massages. We have our own oil line. And we also have Ayurvedic practitioners on site where you can learn more about your constitution, how your body is, and and what your specific constitution needs in order to thrive and to heal. That's beautiful. I mean, I loved my services the last time. I waited too long to book. This time I was like, no, you know, I'm not going to do it this time. And then I was a little disappointed. But the one oil pouring that I had seen some people do, I'm like, oh, that's on my list. Anga, yes. (laughs) <laughs> have you done that before? Oh, it is my absolute favorite. There, We have this one called, it's called the Royal Treatment, and it's Abiyanga with the Sharadara. And that's when they pour the hot oil on your third eye for like 20 to 30 minutes straight. And it just takes you in this insane trance with the hot oil massage. And it's intense, but it's so beautiful. And you feel amazing afterwards. Okay, I'm putting that on my list for the next time. When I book, (laughs) I'm immediately booking that. Yes, and you just feel so balanced afterwards. I mean, the retreat center with the spa, it's all about balancing everything that's going on within our nervous system. You know, a few things that I love. I love that it's spread out, that if you want to be able to go for a walk, you can walk to all the different places. I've hiked on the trails. And then I love that there is like buses, vans in transit at all times that if you don't want to walk, because I know if you're walking from the spa up to the food hall, that is a little bit of a dress. (laughs) It is a nice workout. (laughs) Yeah, we've got a labyrinth walk too, which is a beautiful meditation walk. We have bonfire pit. We host fire ceremonies every Saturday and Thursdays. And yeah, it's it's truly a beautiful campus with 360 mountaintop views. I love it. I do take photos as a hobby. And so that was one thing I definitely made sure to do in one of the mornings for the sunrise. And oh, it is yes. beautiful. There is like a spiritual sense when you're on that property. There's places in this country that I feel pulled spiritually. And that is definitely one of them. I had not had my spiritual awakening, as you would call it, the first time I went. But I knew there was something for me. There was always this longing that I was meant to kind of go back and really be able to connect myself with that. And I think a part of it was my body started to detox while I was there. And I think it overwhelmed me a little bit because there were so many aspects after having my son. I think there was hormone issues. There was GI issues. And then add another layer to it. We found out our our house had mold. And so I think my body was like went to a place that was so pure and clean. And like it was just like, whoa, I love that I had such a different experience the second time. And the connection I got, the time while I was there, the ideas and thoughts I had just even for this podcast just like came to me. And it's like sometimes when I sit in my office, it's like I work so hard for nothing, like nothing comes to me, the creativity just kind of stops. And so if you're someone that has like a creative aspect to your work, going somewhere like that is going to ultimately rejuvenate that. And then you're going to have that connection with other people. I left really connected with some people and I truly felt in some of the meditations, their soul came to my soul and said, I want an episode on this. And it was so simple and brilliant. And it just was, oh, yes, I needed this just a few days, how that can just reset yourself to really be invigorated to kind of have a different aspect with life. And then I came back with all these tools that can help support me in my daily life, no matter if I want it to be five minutes or if I want it to be an hour that really can support me bridging the spiritual worlds and, you know, the real world that we're living in. Yes, absolutely. And what I love about the center as well is It doesn't matter. You can be coming by yourself and it's so easy to connect and make new friends, lifelong friends who are on the similar journey with you, who 
you know, want to have these conversations and, and want to dive deeper into the healing experience, or you can come with friends already and do it as a group. Or maybe you're someone I'm trying to be a hermit when I come and I'm not really here to connect with anyone but myself. On this campus, any any version of yourself that you want to go, that you can. And it, it's super easy. Definitely. I actually went to be by myself. And it's funny, my daughter was like, well, are you going with a friend? And I was like, no. And she's yeah. like, are you going to meet friends there? Like she didn't understand the concept. And I was like, no, honey, I want to go. Yeah. I don't want to be with anybody. But I yeah. still ended up leaving with connection and these people that I will always have a place in my heart for them and that I've left actually still being in conversations with them. So it is beautiful. Yes. And it's being open to what does my soul need for this trip yes. and not really having a set like this is what I want to get out of it. Yes, it's like a spiritual camp for adults. <laughs> it is. I love it. Essentially, yes. yes. The only disappointment I had, and it was all for myself, was I did the labyrinth walk and I did not take my shoes off. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, Kara, you're going to have to come back and take those shoes off. And I was wearing like my hiking boots, like the most, no. you know, like disconnected boots. boots. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. The whole time I was like, my feet are suffocating. But like, I didn't even think to take. And I love walking out in barefoot. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. You know what? And Maybe the universe was like, you were going to step on a bee and that's why you had to have yes. the shoes on. You just never I know. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I was so disappointed with myself. I was like, what was I doing? And at the end of the retreat, I stayed and did a little bit of a hike. And I considered doing it again once I realized but it had started raining but it put me in contact with your hospitality manager because of it so there was a lot of like this happened because of this happened because of this happened on that trip and it was because I was open to what was coming my way so it was beautiful like obviously why we're in conversation was because of it started raining and then she was like hop in the van and I was like okay <laughs> so being open for that stuff yes being open present and accepting all the abundance that the universe has to provide for you. And I feel like all it is is a shift in perspective because it's always there. It's never not. You're never, no one is ever doing anything wrong to not receive what they need in every moment. It's just tuning in to what's being offered constantly all around us. Yeah, I'm actually in this 60 day intensive integration community, I guess, container. And it's ultimately trying to find like the spiritual lesson. And I don't even want to say lesson. It's just like what in this moment, if I'm getting frustrated, what in this moment can I look at is like a spiritual guidance. And so it's been very helpful when I get frustrated or things aren't going my way. And it's like, OK, I'm open. Tell me, guide me. And so it's brought my patience level up because patience is not something that I'm bored with. So could you tell the audience how they can find The Art of Living? Yes. So Instagram is our most productive way to find us. And you can do Art of Living USA or Art of Living Boone. And then we are on Facebook, same tags, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Perfect. I will make sure everything mentioned in today's episode will be in the show notes. And I just appreciate your time and connecting it with me here on the podcast. Yes. Welcome to Float Activity, the channel that guides you on a transformative journey towards spiritual wisdom, self-development, and healing practices, all aimed at elevating your intuition and aligning you with your soul's purpose. I'm your host, Kara Dempsey, and I'm thrilled to have you joining me as we learn together. Please subscribe and share this with a friend to help grow my channel. I appreciate you and we'll chat soon.